Hey guys, EST here, and if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you know I love me some cheap DIY stuff, and I also really love batteries. Hey, the winner of the last review. Um, the problem is, these two can only charge at 2.1 amps at 5 volts, which very much limits what you can do, and that is really slow. 10 watts-ish seems pretty fast, until you have to wait, you know, two and a half hours to charge a cell phone. Time is important in the right uh, scenario, so I thought, okay, let's upgrade to the nicest one, which is this one. Yeah, I stole some batteries out of it, but uh, Sony Mirada times seven currently. <laughs> and then we've got five garbage tier Sanyos. Don't do that, don't mix them, but I'm just borrowing them for uh, another project. And those were like seven bucks a cell or something, I think, it was outrageous. So that whole bank cost me some money, but uh, well, I could probably guess where I got uh, the rest of my stock of them, just saying, you can recycle them. But uh, the age is a thing, you want reliability, and I thought, let's just start looking at off-the-shelf stuff, because battery tech has come pretty far. I mean, you can take a lithium battery and jump a car battery these days. If you don't know what I'm talking about, okay, here's a really old model battery bank, 100% charge, let's go. Uh, it's measuring at a whopping 6 watts, and 54 minutes until full charge from 56 to 100. That is pathetic. I do not have that kind of time. Okay, it's in fast charge mode, 42 minutes until full. Still not that great. It's in 9 volt, 12 volt mode. Uh, it actually doesn't seem to know which. Um, but that's considered fast charge, and it's different per device, and it's different per cable. This cable is certified to 100 watts, by the way, so I know that's not a factor, but don't buy cheap cables. So I thought, let's look what's out there. There's some better tech out there, and I know it. So let me introduce you to something I spent almost a bill on. It's... The latest battery pack from Charge, and by the way, not sponsored in any way. I bought this because I wanted one, and now I'm doing a review because it's really cool. Spoiler alert. So this has one A port, one C port, and they actually make one that's more capable than this, but um, it can do 45 watts on the A port and 65 watts on the C port. Well, one, unlike my white one from the uh, previous videos that was supposed to be fast, extremely fast charge capable, this one doesn't overheat. Secondly we get a whole entire screen. Look at this. Well, let me turn the screen off on that. Oh yeah, it is pulling exactly 12.2 watts and that's because the phone is still on and it's still idle. I'm gonna show you why uh, these are various problems. Like if I had an app open and the screen is on full brightness, we're using the CPU, we're using the graphics adapter, it's gonna shrink actually down to about 7.8 watts because it can't pull from the battery while charging the battery while powering the screen. So that's just how cell phones work. Now, if I were to turn this all the way off, I suspect it would actually charge closer to 20. And this is only an S21 I'm testing with, which is my old phone. I'm actually using my current phone to film right now. But 12.3 uh, watts, okay, it's not bad. It'll tell you um, how much time you have until the depletion of this battery pack. But let's see how much we can get out of this. Let's have some fun. All right, charging my phone while it is recording. Oh, wow, I actually didn't expect that, but um, yeah, it's about 14.8, spiked to 16 for a little bit there. So it's enough to kind of float it, but you won't really make gains. But you're not exactly going to be playing random online video games on your phone in a survival scenario. So if I were to turn my other phone all the way off, let's see what happens. Yeah, 12.4 watts. Okay, so I thought it would be higher, but it's, uh, it's really not in the mood to charge any faster than that, I guess. It is old technology. I know my current one, I, I turned it off when I was in the high 20s, um, and I could have sworn this thing could charge at 45 watts or 65, but I just can't get it to do it. So can you charge it off of solar? I know that was going to be the next question, and the answer is, of course. And did the sun go away under the clouds right when I started filming? Also, of course, but I brought my own sun. Holy cow, that's bright. Okay. Okay, 0.3 watts. Yeah, well, that's LEDs for you. I did try this out in direct sunlight, and yeah, my, my best uh, panels were doing like 9 watts, which would charge us up, you know, eventually. So obviously, no problem there. So here's something I hadn't tried yet. Plugging it into a relatively old laptop, it's still one that runs USB-C, using a 100 watt capable cable, because we don't want that to you know, be a factor. It's still only pulling 9 watts, which is really low. It's actually going down. Now the computer is completely turned off right now. However, I went and got the adapter because I know this only does 5, 9, and 12 volt. That's your standard USB-C battery bank spec. This adapter, you probably aren't going to be able to read that, uh, it can do 20 volts, 3.25 amps, which is the full 65 watts. Otherwise, it can do 15 volts at 3 amps, 
At 9 volts, it can only do 2 amps, and at 5 volts, it'll do 2 amps, aka 10 watts, which is why you can actually use this to charge even an older cell phone. It's got a chip in it that will kind of step the voltage up and down. Kind of neat. I mean, USB-C is getting a little complicated, but uh, I thought this one would at least maybe give it like 15 watts. Let me try a newer laptop. All right, let's see what an E16 Gen 1 does. All right, E16 Gen 1 currently drawing one half of a watt. Wait a minute. It was plugged into my work from home desk, and so the battery was at 100%. I'm editing this in so we can all save some time of me solving that mystery on camera. Oh, now we're talking. I didn't quite catch it on, uh, on film here, but it was drawing 42 watts while it was uh, starting up. Um, I'm going to real quick download a program that will waste electricity. One second. We're sitting at 27 watts just because I'm using it and it's not idle. But let's press the button. It is now calculating pi. All right, here we go. Oh, now we're talking. You wouldn't get this out of one of my other uh, battery banks. It would have exploded by now. Yep. That's approaching the upper bounds of what this laptop can do, actually. If I was hitting the SSD at the same time while also trying to use the couple watts that's allocated to the graphics, we'd be above 45. Slight correction there, I have evidence that this specific model of Lenovo will only hit 65 if it's being supplied with 20 volts, which is a made up voltage that they put on their own power adapters. And even though the computer, all the components together, cannot pull more than 45 watts, the additional 20 is for charging the onboard battery while it's in full operation. But of course, that's good news because that means that 45 watts is enough to run this laptop no matter what the power draw is. Now, off camera, I actually tested this. With the screen dimmed all the way down to the computer sitting 100% idle, not processing anything, it was drawing 7 watts. Yeah, 1 watt lower than my cell phone when it's playing a game. Uh, this laptop is running entirely off of this battery. Now, the onboard battery is 4,000 milliamp hours. This is 20,000. So you get a lot of laptop time out of this. So it, it doesn't like charging it when it's off for some reason, but when it's on, it can run fully over USB power as long as it's there. So that's really weird because I know that this thing cannot do 20 volts, but I guess that's the maximum it can pull over uh, probably 12 volts. Very, very interesting. And that makes sense because the battery on board is about 14 volts. All right, so I purposely drained it down to 86% and put it on my 45 watt capable charger, which is the biggest wall charger I've got. 42.4 watts in, there you go. So this thing will be charged in 15 minutes. Oh my gosh, and 20,000 is a lot. I think I clocked it doing uh, empty to full in like less than two hours though. So I mean, yeah, this thing's about as good as battery banks get. By the way, I cannot stress enough, buy a good cable. Most of this testing was done with a 15 foot cable that is still certified for uh, I believe 100 watts and the data rate isn't very good which is why I use it for charging. Now this one is 100 watts plus it's even thicker because it can do 40 gigabits per second. So you can run like 8K and all kinds of docks and stuff. I think this one's cool because it has an inline meter but um, it is only rated for I think 20 watts. And this is an unreliable piece of garbage from the dollar store. It weighs about as much as a postage stamp. I don't know what it's rated for, but I've never seen it get above 11 watts. So the cable makes a difference. This wasn't even that expensive. It was under 25, I think. I'll just shout them out. Anker, they're pretty good. Orico, pretty good. That's who I'd buy from. So are there any drawbacks or cons to this battery pack? Uh, one, this feels like it would shatter if I dropped it about a foot. So I don't like that. It, it's like high quality plastic, but it's that like brittle thick plastic. So don't like that. Not very good for a survival scenario, but if you kept it in the original box, or, well, let me just grab a little example. A little $5 Apache case right there. Waterproof. Love it. I'm sure there's better brands out there, like, for example, Pelican, but uh, yeah, this thing's pretty cool. I like it. Well, then you're all set, aren't you? In fact, you put the cable right in there. So which one do I prefer? 10 to 20 watts on a good day, but very reliable. Some overheat, some are not great. Supply your own batteries, brand new or used, depending upon your budget. But time is money and time is important. You can't just sit there and say, oh, I've got to charge this or I'll leave it in my pocket while I'm running around in the woods in an emergency scenario because it's going to take four to six hours to charge this up at 10 watts. Uh, considering this was like 60 bucks to build, I think it's pretty obvious which one to go with. 
Um, but 90 bucks, I think, is what I paid, and that might have been a Black Friday deal. I don't know, man. Now, they have bigger and, and even more capable batteries, believe it or not, for uh, upwards of, I think, like 150 200 And I, I really don't respect the brand because they sell wireless chargers, which wireless charging, like Qi charging, I think caps at like 9 watts or something. It's still developing, but just wireless charging in general is the least efficient thing I have ever seen. You get like a 90% power loss or something. So to charge a battery at 10 watts, you have to be emitting like 100. I don't know if it's coming any better than that because those numbers are about a year old, but no thanks. Don't even touch those. But they do make one that can do, I think, dual 100 or something on two ports. Utterly ridiculous. You could run two laptops at once off of it. You got to be careful with the bigger ones because you can't bring them on an airplane legally. I believe 24,000 milliamp hours is the limit. So 20,000 is nice. But the fact that you can run a full-blown laptop, you could easily run a Chromebook, easily run a tablet or an iPad off of it, and you can technically charge off of it or charge any phone or any GPS device, all from one simple package. I like it. I kind of wish it was like 50 bucks. I know what kind of cells are in there. And let's just say this, this circuitry is nice, but it's not that nice. I mean, those are Japanese polymer caps. It's still not that nice, okay? They got to make money, I get it, but I don't know, man. You're kind of paying a premium for a premium product. But then again, I mean, so this cost me <laughs> scrap batteries and five bucks for the casing. Okay, uh, comes with a comes with some LEDs. That's always fun. The voltmeter is horrifically inaccurate on every single one that I own. Um, on this one, if you're at four percent, you're at about fifty percent. I mean, if you really want it to work, just spend a little bit more. But if you want to go DIY ultra budget because that's your budget right now, I'd say go DIY. You know, don't go in the middle and get kind of nice cells in a kind of nice enclosure. And this one, boy, if I were to drop this, uh, yeah, that would crack. <laughs> that's just battery packs for you. So if you're shopping for a way to keep all your gadgets running, um, I'd say get the Charge 140. It is one of their smaller, capable direct wired ones. And it's uh, the most affordable by far. So if it's in your budget, I'd say pick it up and uh, you could use it in your daily life and then you'd pretty much always have it on you if it's that important. Now don't store it in a cold car, especially a hot car. You, you know, it's still lithium, you still gotta babysit it. But man, this thing in a pinch when you could just like juice up your phone as quickly as possible and just be gone, I love it. Because time is safety. So thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you guys next time.